Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas. We got a great episode for you today. My install crews are on the final install of the year, and it just so happens to be my house, my own personal house. So if you want to figure out how a solar guy actually builds their own solar system, stay tuned. I'll tell you all about it. Now I'm super excited about this project. Do I think that this is the best solar system in Texas? Yes, of course. But you know, this is coming from my perspective. This is my home. I was able to build my home from the ground up and design my solar system completely around that and all of our energy goals as well. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down all the different factors that we considered in designing our system and also in designing our house, why we chose the components and the materials that we did. I hope you find it informative and thank you so much for checking this out. And you let me know what you think. Now normally when customers call me and they're just moving into a new home or they're considering building a home and they want a quote on solar, I will let them know that they should probably wait six months. And the reason for that is because you really don't have a good baseline of your electric consumption in that home. Even if they are tracking their electric consumption in their prior home. Their prior home or existing home may be older. It may be larger or bigger. So it's not a good apples apples comparison when you're trying to design and build the perfect solar system to meet their energy goals if you use that prior home as a baseline. So with the six months of usage and then that customer coming back to us after that time, we now have a much better estimate on what type of system they're going to need and how big we're going to have to build it to meet their energy goals. With me, since I've been doing this for a while, what I did was I tracked our electric usage for the last several weeks that we've been in the home. Now we've had varying degrees of temperature day to day while we've been in the home. We've been as high as the up to mid 70s and all the way down to the mid 20s with this last weekend's freeze. So I was stunned when I actually saw our electric consumption. Our electric consumption peaked during the coldest days of the time that we've been in this home and they were the lowest during the times that were warmer. That tells us that our electric heat pump is consuming much more electricity than our air conditioned unit or what we would consume when it's warmer outside. So I was able to use those figures as a baseline to build out our annual projection and then design a system that I'm pretty confident will help offset that. First, we began with the design of the roof. We wanted to make sure that the largest part of the roof was southward facing so that we could take advantage of the most amount of sun throughout the entire year. In addition, with the metal roof, you don't need to go into the roof itself. We use fasteners that will simply fasten the bracketing and the framing for the solar panels directly onto that without having to penetrate the roof. Then we took a drone and we surveyed the entire property, which is what we do during our site assessments for all of our builds. This helps us to make sure that we could design the solar panels in the most optimal place to get sun exposure. We're able to get 99% accuracy in the amount of production that we're going to have per panel, not just for the entire array, but for each individual solar panel, which really helps us fine tune our design to maximize production for our customers. with the design of the roof, I wanted to make sure that our house was as electrified as possible. There's only a couple things that we are actually running off of gas, which is propane. One of them is our fireplace. We like to be able to light a propane gas fire, uh, get the uh, wood burning, and then just kind of let it go from there. Secondly, my wife really likes gas propane stoves. She likes to cook and all of that using gas. So we actually have a gas um, set up just for those two appliances, but everything else in the house is electric. The reason why is because we want to save money. We want to make sure that we have the best and most reliable way to provide backup power to our house during an outage. So to help facilitate all of this solar that I knew I was going to be putting on the home, I went ahead and installed two 200 amp panels here that have all of our breakers and include plenty of space for any upgrades that I may have in the future, such as a pool or a hot tub, something like that. I also went ahead and installed an automatic transfer switch for Generac because I'm going to be installing a 24kW generator at some point here. Not right now, but I know that I'm going to be doing it later. So as we go ahead and, and work through our installation, I want to make sure that these are all able to get tied in to our inverters, which are right over here. I decided to go with 
two Solark 15K hybrid inverters. These inverters are beasts. They're amazing. Uh, they're a hybrid inverter, which means that they're AC-DC coupled, and we're able to integrate them and configure them with just about any battery that's out there on the market. I'll likely be looking at batteries in the future, just not right now. Again, there's a lot of budget-friendly batteries out there. I'll probably end up going with the home grid stacked system, but I'm just trying to get through this install here, and then next year we'll be looking at what can we do about expanding our backup power options. Now it certainly is much more efficient and cost effective if you were to design your house before you put solar on so that you could build it and make sure that everything is done right and to scale. However, if you're already in a home, just know that there may need to be some upgrades done depending upon the size of the solar system that you install and the components that you want to tie into it. Maybe a generator, maybe a series of backup batteries. You may require a main panel upgrade. Um, these are two 200 amp panels. Many customers will have a 100 amp uh, main panel with maybe a 50 amp sub panel, depending upon what you want to do. We may need to upgrade that. Also, if you're looking at putting in a generator, it will also include an automatic transfer switch. So these are some of the basic upgrades that we'll need to do if we're retrofitting your home for solar. But it's one of the key things that you could build in if you're building a home or designing a home from the ground up. Now, why did I go with the string system and not, let's say, end phase micro inverters. Well, string systems traditionally have a lot of you know, positives to them. First off, they're, they're straight DC. So if you're looking at adding batteries later, that straight DC will be able to provide you know, much quicker charging, much more robust performance uh, when you have backup battery storage. However, these Solarks are AC and DC coupled, so I still could have installed that along with the battery and maybe gone with some in-phase microinverters. Now, there's a lot of benefits to the microinverters, as we've talked about in other videos. Microinverters are great for giving you individual panel performance monitoring. They're great for making sure that the whole system is producing and optimized. If you have a shady day or a tree that casts shade on just a few panels within the array, then those microinverters allow you to still maximize the production of the other panels in the array even though only a few are getting shading. So why did I decide to go with the string system? Well, number one, it's the Solark. The Solark inverter is, in my opinion, the best on the market. It's, it's a hybrid inverter and there's so many things that we could do with it. It's compatible, it's modular, and so I really am excited about the Solark inverter product. But it still doesn't, you know, help me out if I'm wanting to do individual panel performance monitoring or panel production monitoring. So with all of the Mission 415 watt panels that I have on the roof, I want to be able to make sure that they're each producing optimally and that there's no issues with any shade, even though there's not trees around here. At some point, I'm planting some oaks around and they may grow. And over the next 15, 20 years, there's a possibility that they may cast some shade, although not likely because that's how I designed our roof and our yard. So to help combat that, I went with a Tigo optimizer. So every single panel, every single solar module gets its own Tigo optimizer. Those optimizers then tie into the Solar inverter. These optimizers are fantastic. Um, they function in a very similar way as the Enphase microinverter, except they're not actually converting DC to AC. That's the job of the Solar. What these guys are doing is they're making sure that we have optimization of that DC current as the sun is hitting each individual panel. On top of that, we have an app as well. So Tigo has an app where we could log in and much like the Enphase app, it allows us to monitor individual panel performance monitoring. So we get all of the benefits of a string system with that DC current running directly into a backup battery system without any of the drawbacks of the loss of production, of the cascading of, of shade, reducing the overall production of an array, of not being able to monitor individual panel performance. Now, it is a little bit more costly. So those microinverters are great and they tif they've typically been more expensive than your standard single inverter, but once you add the inverter costs along with the optimizer costs for the uh, for each uh, solar module, now you're looking at a slightly more expensive system. But in my opinion, it's worth it because you're getting all of the benefits without many or if any of the drawbacks. Now here's the front side of the 415 mission panel. You can see it's beautiful. It's sleek, black on black. We've had a lot of precipitation this morning, but I'm not worried about it. these panels are built to withstand extreme temperatures, especially here in 
in Texas. They will take a direct hit from a golf ball sized uh, hail traveling at over 80 miles an hour. They will hold up against high heat, high uh, uh, humidity. They'll hold up against extreme cold. So the hottest it ever got here this summer was 104 degrees, somewhere around there. That's not even typical. We typically see in my part of Texas about 97, 98 degrees. The coldest it's ever been this year was what we saw this last weekend. We got down to 28, 29 degrees. Now that's not really that cold I know for people up in Buffalo right now that are freezing. They're probably laughing at how warm that temperature actually is, but these solar panels are built to withstand all of that. They'll withstand fire, they'll withstand hurricane winds, hail, um, high temperatures, low temperatures, humidity. These panels are manufactured and built here in Texas, not just for the Texas climate, but also for the, any other climates that we're probably going to see around the U.S. and elsewhere. I really like these panels. They're backed by a 25-year limited warranty. They're a great product. And I'm super Super excited to see how they look. All right, so if you've ever wanted to see the back side of a solar module, here we are. So we have our Mission 415 uh, watt panel. We have our glass layer that is layered into an aluminum frame. So you can see that there's some spacing between this aluminum frame. This is where the frame actually attaches to the uh, railing system on the roof and there's plenty of space here to give room for cooling and to give room for uh, cleaning and maintaining the panels. It's really simple to just unbolt these and then to remove the solar module so that we could do any repair or troubleshooting work later on down the future if there are any issues. Here is where we have the tie-in. Remember we talked about the Tigo DC optimizers. If you have microinverters from Enphase or any other microinverters, Solark's coming out with microinverters next year, this is where they simply connect and tie in here. Now, these are each going to tie in to their own individual Tygo DC optimizer in a similar fashion. If we were running Enphase IQ8 microinverters, every module would get their own connection and their own uh, tie directly into the combiner box or uh, down through our conduit and ultimately back into the solar converters. So they're very large, as you can see. I'm about 5'11", so these are about six feet tall and they're pretty wide, um, but they're not too heavy. So they're only about 40, 45 pounds. So many of these um, individual panels here, you could move by yourself. Now, um, the guys have been going through, we use a pallet jack to pull them out of the truck and now they're managing them individually. They're just handing them off to each other as they're working them across the roof. We're making sure everyone's safe and that no one's going to get hurt. But that's basically the back end of a solar module. All right, so we're on day three of this project. This project has been extraordinary. We started uh, just a couple of days ago. We were just coming out of the freeze. It was 39 degrees outside, so you could tell just in how I'm filming this video, I came out here with my cowboy hat and my scarf and my gloves because that's how cold it was. And then you go right to the next day and it's a nice balmy 74 degrees and it was bright and sunny. And now the rain clouds have come in and so we're looking at getting as far along the way on this project as we can. It's so let's go ahead and take a look at the great job that the boys are doing so far. So we're looking at our Mission 415 panels, which is supported by the Tygo DC optimizers that are right there underneath. We have our metal roof that has our clamping and rail system that's holding up our array. You can see up there that we still have the rest of the array to fill out. And then we have the other side, and that's why I'm saying we may not get done today, but we'll push through and see how far we can get. So what happens is we need to tie all of those DC optimizers together and we're gonna pull them down through the conduit. The problem with the metal roof is that we can't go down into the attic. If you're looking at a, a standard comp roof or a wood shingle roof, what we're able to do is to run the conduit down in through the attic so you never see any of the conduit running along the roof. And then that conduit will pop back down right where we have our combiner box or our inverter box depending upon your setup. So what we're gonna have to do here since it's a metal roof and we can't actually penetrate it down is we are going to have to run some conduit along the back and down into the solarks. Now that's not going to be a problem from an aesthetic perspective because I bought a few cans of rust-oleum that are the same exact color as my roof and so we'll be able to camouflage those uh, uh, co metal conduits and you won't even know that they're there. Well the rain did come in later on day three but before it started raining the guys were able to complete the solar modules being mounted onto the frame. They were able to pull all the wire through the conduit and begin the electrical work to tie everything in together. 
By day four, all that was left was just to commission the system. The guys did a great job working through all the challenges that we had this week with the rain. The system looks beautiful and I'm super excited to have it in. Next, we just need to work with our electric cooperative to get our interconnection agreement approved and then we'll be able to take advantage of all that solar has to offer. All right, folks, that's about wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Again, this was just phase one. Phase two is coming next year in 2023 where I plan to put in my whole home backup generator along with my backup battery banks to make this house truly self-sustained, truly energy independent, and so that we could look forward to the future, not have to worry about outages or grid failures or anything. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to drop a comment below and let me know, do you think that this is the best solar system in Texas? I think so, but you let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless.